I am so excited to share this message with you. Guys, this is going to be a deep message. Um, we're going to have some notes, which you really want to get. Um, okay, what we're talking about, you can see from the title of the video, the writing of the book, the seal of God, and the resurrection. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, the body of Christ the last, you know, 100 years or so has really focused on the concept of rapture. And I realized that there's a lot of things I was taught um, early on that I just assumed everybody knew certain things. Like, for example, the rapture is really not the right term. The right term is the resurrection. Okay, so when you read the Bible and it talks about the resurrection, that's the, the great promise. That's the great day of redemption. And... That is really what it is. Now, what's going to happen is all of the saints that have lived for 6,000 years, okay? Now, there were some that were resurrected with Christ on his resurrection day, which you see in Matthew chapter 27. However, uh, all souls await the judgment day. So let's, let's, let's conceptually think about this. I'm going to have to do a whole video because I realize that there really isn't much teaching on the resurrection. And it is the foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ. But what do we have? Let's explain it very simply in a few minutes. What is the resurrection? The resurrection comes about because first off we have death. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, death is thus instituted. We have death, okay? So once we have death on the scene, we have something that was not God's original design. So mankind, when he was made, was not to die, okay? Was uh, formed the dust of the earth, God breathed in him the breath of life, okay? That's the first Adam. We're going to talk about the last Adam later in the video. But he breathed him, he became a living soul, a nepesh. And when he became a living soul, he was not created to die. He was created for him to eat from the tree of life. Now, if he ate from the tree of life, he would have lived forever. He would have not died. That is the original intention okay so he has the two trees so he had to de he decided he ate from the wrong tree thus bringing death all right because mankind is not designed to die he's designed to live forever is a eternal being okay like the angels because of this death this this tree of knowledge of good and evil death comes into the scene so then we have the promise of jesus christ that he would restore us from death into um, the original design, the original body, the glorified body Adam and Eve had. So let's take some dirt and, and talk about this. So actually this is good dirt because it is red. So Adam means red. So it doesn't matter if you're um, how old, whatever, whatever happens to your physical body, if a person dies and they decompose and they turn back into the dust of the earth, okay? You face God, you face the judgment with your spirit, soul, and body. The three must be together to stand before God, okay? So when the judgment comes, it doesn't matter if you're a good person or a bad person. That's both in the resurrection. It's the just and the unjust, okay? So the soul... And the spirit, okay, that is uh, detained somewhere else, is thus joined with the physical dirt, with the physical remains of the body. Doesn't matter what state it is, if it's dust poured into the sea, it's going to be taken, okay? The body is going to be restored again, and it is going to face God, okay? That's the resurrection, the resurrection is a promise of the fact that all men, okay, will live eternally. And the promise is by faith in a redeemer to redeem this death, okay, 
is that, okay, it's described as sleeping. Okay, so the people are sleeping up until the time that their soul and spirit is combined with their body. And then the dust and the ashes of their corpses turns into a physical body again, just like they were born. They'll have a physical body again. They will stand before the white throne and the books will be open. Okay? Now, the resurrection is the promise of all souls, all souls that have lived up until the judgment day. When they live until the judgment day, this will happen. Okay? It doesn't matter if they're righteous or wicked. The same thing will, be ha will happen. The dead bodies will come from the graves. They will uh, be restored. Their spirit and soul will be restored to their body, and they'll stand before God, and the books will be opened. That is the resurrection. Okay? Um, I think I'll do a, a no other whole video on this, guys. I just want to explain it within a few minutes. So that is really what we should have been taught, okay? Because that is the foundation of faith in Jesus Christ, okay? Because now what you have is you have the focus on rapture and the, the kind of corrupt teaching on this, okay? And the corrupt teaching leads people to say, no, there's no rapture. Well, you want to be careful with that because you don't want to say there's no resurrection. There is a resurrection, okay? Now, the promise of, of Harpazo is that there would be people alive in the resurrection. So when the resurrection and the graves are open and the saints come, the just and the un and that day comes at the resurrection, there would be people alive that would participate in it. Okay? That is actually the resurrection. That is actually the rapture. Now, if we taught on the resurrection, okay, we would, we would place more emphasis on the, the importance of the resurrection. So because we don't know the resurrection, it's going to be difficult to understand some of the things we're going to talk about because we're going to go into deeper things that are beyond the resurrection, beyond the harpazo of the revealing of this, okay? So, as we talk about writing, the seal of God, the writing of the book, and the resurrection. Now, these are terms that, you know, I, you know, I, I just studied this, I, I must have studied this um, 30 years ago. And I was like, okay, you know, I was fine. And... Um, the way I, I came about the understanding, um, I try to explain, like, if you ask me a question, this is, this, is how, this is why I'm doing this video. Okay, if you ask me a question, you say, Leland, you say the seal of God is the resurrection. I say, yes. And you say, okay, well, explain that to me. I say, well, it's in, it's in first um, Ephesians, okay, it talks about the seal of God, okay, and it talks about the uh, promised redemption, the redemption, the Purchase possession. Okay, so let's, let's grab our dirt again. Let's grab a piece of dirt, and let's, let's talk about this again. Now, when we have this dirt, okay, we have the, the body being restored. Now, you have to remember Adam and Eve came from the dust. Now, when it comes to redemption, okay, we have another video on this, but you redeem the bride and you redeem the land. So just like Adam and Eve come from the dust, okay, it, the redemption process of redeeming back, purchasing back, has to do with the person and the land. Okay, that's why you have the promised land and the promised people in the promised land. Okay, so that concept of the promised land is being described in Ephesians chapter 1. Okay, it's talking about the redemption, talking about the purchased possession of the land. All right, now that same concept is explained in Romans chapter 8, verse 23, where it's talking about the first fruits. So Ephesians 1 talks about the seal of God and the purchased possession. Okay, so the person and the land is the purchased possession. You understand? The same thing is described in Romans chapter 8, verse 23, where it's talking about the first fruits, the redemption, and the purchased possession. Now there it says the redemption of the body. Okay, now we have the redemption of the body. Thus, the redemption of the body is uh, connected with the seal of God. Okay? Now, I understood that. Now, you might say, I don't understand. Well, that's fine. That's why we're doing this whole video. And it's going to take however long it's going to take to go through all this to continue to explain. Okay, so we have this 
the, the, this concept of writing in the book, right? Okay, we're writing in the book. We have, we have something called a seal. We have a, a scroll. We have a seal. A seal is something that is opened, okay? And a seal is something that can close or mark something, okay? So what we can see in the title of the video, we're talking about the, the writing, okay? So then once you have the seal, the seal is open. It opens a book. There's a writing, okay? And we know that there's names on the writing, okay? For example, books like the Lamb's Book of Life, the names that are written on the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the writing, okay? And then we have other things about the seal of God, okay? So these are, these are concepts I, I'm going to keep repeating, writing, the seal of God, and the resurrection. We can see that they're all connected perfectly. Now, another way to understand the seal of God is with the description of the Apostle Paul in the resurrection in um, Philippians chapter 3. Now, in Philippians chapter 3, you see you have a bow, okay? And Paul uses this word um, to uh, press towards the mark. I press towards the mark and towards the, the high calling. So the, this uh, gives the idea of a bow and arrow, Okay, the mark is, is something you're pointed at. Okay, I'll point at you. <laughs> you're pointed at and you press towards the mark. You, you aim something. Okay, you aim and you point, um, and you press towards the mark. So that word mark is skopos in the Greek. Okay, so this marking does relate to the seal or identifying something, identifying a goal, okay? And in Philippians chapter 3, the goal is the resurrection, okay? So the, the seal, okay, is marking the person, and then the person must run. The person must set their mind and attention on the goal. What's the goal? The resurrection, okay? So then the Apostle Paul says, okay, I press towards the mark. I press towards the goal, the aim, okay, of the, of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And then he says to mark, skopio in the Greek, them which walk for an example or a pattern. Okay, so the Apostle Paul is using himself as an example of to mark someone. So then he's saying the mark is something you set at as a goal and you aim, okay, or you run a race, but then you also identify others. Identify others that are disciples that are running the race. Okay, you see that? So I press towards the mark. I press towards the scopos, the aim, the bullseye, right? Towards the high calling in Christ Jesus. Now, um, the, it, I press towards the prize, we should say. Okay, now prize here is only used twice by the Apostle Paul. It's also used in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, where he says, I run a race. Okay, so now we have, a, we have um, athletics, we have bow and arrow, okay, um, hitting the bullseye. Now we have running the race. So we run the race, okay, and we run a race, and race is a stadium, or a stadia. And this is a furlong. This is now giving us New Jerusalem because, okay, we saw the bow and arrow. Then you have uh, actually a reed. Let's use the reed. So then when you ne measure New Jerusalem, you measure it by a reed. Okay, and the reed measures stadia or a race. Okay, and then how many? Stadia? 12,000. New Jerusalem is, has 12 edges to it. 12 times 12,000, 144,000 stadia. Yes, that's what it's talking about. Those are the ones that will finish the race, run the race. That's what it means. Run a race, run a stadium. Run all, but one receives the prize. Okay? So there's a prize. There's running a race. Now, let's go back to uh, Philippians. And we had Mark. So we had Mark them that were for an example. 
um, who will change our vile body into his glorified body. Now, I want to, I want to emphasize something. What we're going to do, guys, we're going to hop later in the video onto the notes. I can't make this a short video. Uh, it's just going to be a longer video. When we go to Philippians, I really want you to see this. Because this is where, as we mentioned before, the doctrine of rapture, okay, is not the way that it's taught now, is not that the way it was taught in the early church. Okay, it was taught as the resurrection. Philippians chapter 3 gives us the Apostle Paul, his standpoint on the resurrection. Okay, um, and so he tells us that being a Jew, being of the tribe of Benjamin, means nothing in the resurrection. Okay, and then he begins to, ca to describe how he forsakes the world. Verse seven. But what things were gained to me, those things I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count the loss of all things and the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I do count them but dung, that I might win. Christ. Okay, so winning Christ is the goal, is the bow and arrow, is the, uh, is the goal, okay, is winning Christ. And everything in the world is dung, is refuse, is, is worthless, unless Christ, okay, that I might be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness of which of God is by faith, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. What are we talking about? We're talking about the resurrection. He's talking about his personal goal of the resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to his death. Okay, so the, the way you press, you win the goal is you fellowship of Christ's sufferings. You go through Christ's sufferings, not for the sin of others, but to fellowship in his sufferings, because the more you know him, the more you know the power of his resurrection. The more you know that you are helpless in your flesh to accomplish the goal. Now listen to this. Verse 11. If by any means I might attain the resurrection if by any means I might obtain the resurrection. That's the Apostle Paul talking, okay? So all you people talking about you're going to be caught up. And, and Are you better than the Apostle Paul? He said, if I might attain the resurrection. That's why you don't see me on this channel saying, I'm going to be raptured and all this stuff, okay? I hope to. I set my goal. I forsake all. I try to do the things that the Bible says. We all must do this, okay? But to just assume you're going to make it, okay, and that you, this is self-righteousness. This is the very thing the Apostle Paul spoke against, self-righteousness, declaring that you are going to make the resurrection. We hope to. Okay? Verse 12, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfected. But I follow after that, that I may apprehend for that I, um, which I also apprehend in Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend. I count myself as not apprehended. What? The resurrection. I, forgetting those things which are, this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind. I reach forth to those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, this is what we talked about, the bow and the arrow, the, the um, prize. Okay, what's the prize? Okay, let us therefore as many be perfect and thus minded. Now, it, then it talks about those forsaking, okay, in the next following verses. Now, this is what we've been telling you, verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven. From whence we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our vile body that it may fashion into his glory of body. What is that? That's the resurrection. According to the working where is he, he's able to subdue all things in himself. So the Apostle Paul is saying here very, very clearly, if 
I may by any means obtain the resurrection. Okay? So, this is the mindset we must have, the same as the Apostle Paul. If we press on to the end, if we repent of our self-righteousness and pride and arrogance, okay, we, that we would be accounted worthy, okay? That's exactly what we can see clearly here. But there are important things that are stated that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, that we would know and live in the power of the resurrection and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ daily. Okay? If by any means I may attain, okay, the resurrection of the dead. Okay? So there we can see the mark, the seal, okay, the setting of the goal, the skopos, okay, in the Greek. I press towards the high calling. Now, in, now, we believe that the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. In the Hebrews, it talks about the better resurrection. Okay? So that's what he is alluding to, is the better resurrection. All right? Now, um, now some, other the, some other parts of this, we're going to um, look at the notes. But at this point, you're probably watching this video, and you're like, Leland, why do you have this water bottle um, on your belt. You know, what are you doing? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to get into the notes. We're just going to demonstrate a couple things like the bow and arrow. Okay, that's the, that's the seal. That's the mark, the aim, the goal of the resurrection. Okay, now another thing we want to explain to you is this here. Now what this is, is this is a, this is a great mystery, and I, and I want you to uh, take note of, of this is what we have, of course, is a, a, um, a water bottle, right? We have a water bottle, but instead of it thinking of it as a water bottle, what you can see inside is, you see inside that we have a scroll. So really what this is, is this is a scroll case, okay? And, and if we open it up and we take it out, of course, we have a scroll, okay? So we have a scroll in a scroll case, but I also want you to notice that it has a it has a lid because we're trying to demonstrate a twofold facet of a great mystery here. And that is that you would you would have something holding, OK, a document like this here and you would have something else. Imagine that this were ink. OK, imagine that the top were ink. And that it were separated and then the bottom is a case that you could hold a scroll. Okay, so like this here would be ink, and then you would take your pen, and you would put it in the ink, and then you would mark, or you would write something, okay? The reason we're um, taking the time to describe this is that this is what we can see in Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 2. There was a man, he was clothed in white linen, and he had a... Uh, King James says a ink horn. Okay, so that's this portion here of the ink horn where you put the ink in the top. Okay, now other translations call it a writing case or a scribe case. Now we believe it's actually both. So that one portion of what the angel is carrying on his side, on his waist, it says it clearly, because then what he does is he, he goes about marking with the ink the people, okay, that are sighing, that are crying for the abominations in the city. Now, prophetically, what we believe is going on is that, yes, he has an ink horn, okay, and he's marking, but he's also looking at a scroll, okay? Prophetically, we're uh, observing the same angel with the seal of God. And when the same angel with the seal of God is going throughout to mark those with the seal of God, He's marking those that are written in the scribe case, in the book, on the scroll. Okay, so what he's doing is he, he has the ink horn, he has the pen, and he has the book. And what he's doing is he's looking for the names, okay, this person, that person, and then he's going about and he's marking the people on their foreheads. He marks the people on the foreheads uh, in Revelation, 
okay? In the book of Revelation, it's talking about the, the seal of God. That's what he's doing. He's looking at a list. He's looking at a book. He's looking at the names. And then he's going forth looking for those people with the names, and he's marking them on the forehead, okay? So what we're noticing is that the angel has a scroll case and an inkhorn. They are one. They are the same because you have one book that's inside. You have a scroll inside the scroll case, and you have an inkhorn, okay? You have an inkhorn, and that would have the ink, and he would mark the people, okay? So that's what we're uh, demonstrating um, for you of the great mystery of what happens in Revelation. We see this angel in Revelation 7. We see the same angel in Ezekiel chapter 9. Okay. Now, a lot of this, we're now going to get into the details of the um, other aspects of how we can prove this with um, all the scriptures about the writing of the seal of God. All right, here's our notes. Definitely get these guys. Uh, this is something you want to keep. You want to really study. You want to really get this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. That I might know him in the power of his resurrection. So you can see in our notes what we're doing is we're highlighting in green our bullet words. Okay, there's some other ones here, but writing in the book, the seal of God, and the resurrection. There's two pages in the notes. This is page one. That I may know him in the power of his what? Resurrection. Philippians 3 is talking about the resurrection. If by any means I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying, is if he, the Apostle Paul, may obtain the resurrection. Verse 14, I press towards the mark, the scopos. This is the aim, the goal. This is the seal. For the prize, Babylon, okay? And we see that word in 1 Corinthians 9, 24. I, I press for the, uh, the mark, the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So the prize... The scopos is like the uh, bow and arrow, the goal, the bullseye, okay? But the prize is also running the race. 1 Corinthians 9, 24, run a race, which is a stadium. This is the furlong, 12,000 furlongs in New Jerusalem times 12 edges is 144,000 furlongs, 144,000 people that run the race, New Jerusalem, they run all, but one receives the prize. Okay, same word prize that we saw. All right, let's go back to Philippians 3. Mark, them which walk for an example, typos, or a pattern. Okay, mark those, scopio, to take aim at. So identify the people as examples, is what it says, all right? Uh, and then verse 21, who will transform. Uh, Metasconaptizo will transfigure, okay, transform, transfigure, change our vile body that it may formed into his simorphos, okay, uh, his glorious body formed into, okay, his glorious body. That's the resurrection that the Apostle Paul is talking about. This we also see with the seal of God and the resurrection in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. Some saying the resurrection has passed, okay? Just like we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15 is a whole chapter on the resurrection. You should really read that over and over, learn about the resurrection, okay? But there were some saying there was no resurrection. That's what he uh, is identifying here in his uh, epistle to Timothy as well as 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There's some saying there's no resurrection. We have the same thing. There's some people saying there's no resurrection, they're using the word rapture, but we must believe in the resurrection. It's part of our faith in Christ. So I'm saying there, so he's talking about what? The resurrection, Second Timothy, ver, the next verse. The foundation, okay, we just saw the foundation of, is New Jerusalem, okay, with 12,000 stadium. The foundation of God stands firm having this seal, okay? So again, we have the association with the seal and the resurrection, Okay, we saw it in Philippians 3. Now we can see it in 2 Timothy. Some saying the resurrection is past. Okay, uh, having this seal. And the seal is everyone naming the name of the Lord. So the seal itself is the name of the Lord within the seal. 
All right. Now, let's go to uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, okay, and Romans chapter 8. Ephesians chapter 1, Romans chapter 8 also give us the idea of the seal and the redemption or the resurrection, okay? So if we read Ephesians 1, 13, in whom after you have believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee. Wow, guys, you gotta, if you, uh, those of you that study and take this serious and, and actually discipline yourself to read the Bible, look at this word, Erebon. It's a down payment, okay? Common in papri written in documents okay so now again we have the seal and we have this word guarantee which is written okay so the the writing of the people the writing of the sealed ones on the papyri on the book all right now so this word means down payment and this comes from a hebrew word you can see a hebrew word is arabaun all right and you see that in genesis 38 17 through 20. now this is the same story guys we we had in the other video, we talked to you about uh, Judah and Tamar. So read that story, Judah Tamar. That's the only time this word is used. Now, what's interesting about this, you can see it's an ayin, resh, bait. Now, when you say this, now this one is, uh, it's Arab. So when you say Arab, it's this word, okay? It's the root word of to guarantee something, all right? So that's Arab. In the Hebrew. So, um, and so is this promise, this guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption. Okay, the apolytrosis of the purchased possession. Okay, remember how he showed you the dirt before? The purchased possession. It's the land, but it's also people. So, you redeem the land, you redeem the people. The purchased possession. All right. To obtain property, it's also called a peculiar treasure in First Peter two nine. Okay, so what are we seeing? We're seeing the seal, we're seeing the writing, and the redemption. Okay, of the purchased possession. Now, if we look at this word redemption, we'll see it in Romans eight. Okay, but before we go there, keep in mind Ephesians four thirty. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, on whom you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, so clearly the seal of God is for the resurrection, the day of redemption. That's what, that's what this is talking about, all right? And again, Romans 8, 12, uh, 8, 23, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. And we groan, all right? Now, I want you to make note of this word groan. We're going to talk about it later. Waiting for the adoption, okay, the, the sonship, the redemption, of polytrosis, the payment of the ransom of what? Our body. Okay, so the body, redemption of the body is connected with the first fruits, is connected with the seal, is connected with the writing in the book. Okay, can you see that? Well, we're, if you don't, you know, we, I'm just showing you the whole Bible talks about this concept, all right? So we're going to show you this everywhere. Um, I could say so much more, guys, that I'm not going to get to. So we can see this in Revelation 6. Heaven departed as a scroll or a book when it is rolled together. This is referring to the same thing. It's the resurrection. You see it in Isaiah 25, 7, and 8. Okay? And then in Revelation 7, 2, the angel ascending from the east sun having the seal. Okay? So just a few... Verses prior, this is all within the sixth seal. You have the scroll in the book, heaven departing. You have the scroll and book, roading, and then you have the seal of the living God. And you have the 144,000 in Revelation 14, 1, before the throne. They were what? Redeemed from the earth. Okay? So this is the redemption. Okay? The seal is the redemption, the scroll, the writing in the book. And in Daniel 12, 1, the people were delivered, everyone that should be found written in the book. Again, the writing of the book. Many that were asleep in the dust shall be awake. This is the resurrection. Okay? So you have the writing of the book, and you have the resurrection. Okay? And remember the seal. And the wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. Then verse 4. O Daniel, shut up the book and seal 
the book until the times of the end. So in the times of the end, the book would be unsealed. Okay, the, but the people will be sealed. Who? Those found written in the book. When? When the resurrection, many that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. That's the resurrection. Now, I'm so excited to share with this with you. <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. Okay, part two of our notes. All right, we got part two. The writing of the, uh, the writing of the, in the seal of God and the resurrection. We're continuing this theme. Now, as we mentioned, 1 Corinthians 15, read this whole chapter. Read it over and over. Really get it, all right? But there are certain things, and there's a great mystery here that is amazing. And this is what we're saying about how these books are sealed. They're right in front of us. But you cannot understand the things I'm telling you if you just read the King James. Or you just read any translate. It doesn't matter. They're not going to show you what's really going on. It takes work, guys. It takes study. It takes effort. Yet you're just getting this handed to you because I did all the work for you. <laughs> but who cares? It's the grace and glory of God that the things hidden would be revealed. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, 45. It says, this is what it says. It says, it is what? Written. So what we're doing, we're talking about the writing of the book. So it's written. The first protos, Adam, was made a living soul. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover this. Don't get ahead of us. Okay. So uh, the first, it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last was made a quickening spirit. Okay, so you can see in blue, we have the text of what the Apostle Paul is saying. But I want you to notice what it says. First Corinthians 15, 40, it is written, the first, all right, now this word in Greek is protos. Now we know protos means the first, and it's also the alpha in the Greek language, okay? So when we look at Revelation 1, verse 11, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It says in English, but beginning is protos. So he is the Alpha. He is the first letter. Okay? He is the protos. Okay? And he is the Omega. All right? So what's happening here is... The Apostle Paul says, it is written. So this is written somewhere in the Bible. He's quoting something. Okay, He's quoting something in the Bible. And he's saying, the first Adam was made a living zeo soul. The last eschatos. Okay, the last. Okay, Christ is the first and the last. The omega was made a quickening spirit. Okay, so... What he's saying is that, okay, somewhere in the Bible it says, okay, there's the first Adam and there's the last Adam. All right? Now, we know that what the Apostle Paul is doing here is identifying that Christ is the Alpha and Omega. And not only that, he is the Aleph and the Tav. Okay? Now, what is he quoting here? It is written. Well, what he's quoting is Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 then formed Yahweh, Elohim. Okay. And then it says Yahweh, Elohim. And there's an Aleph and a Tav. Okay. So there's an Aleph and a Tav here after Yahweh, Elohim. Yahweh, Elohim. Okay. When God formed the man, Adam. Okay. Aleph, Date, Mim. Adam. All right. So, but what it says is, Yahweh, yod heh vav Elohim, Aleph Tav. Man. From the dust of the ground and breathed in, in his nostrils the breath of life. Okay, which in Hebrew is hey, and became a soul, nepesh, living. So what, what is happening here? I don't know if you noticed what happened. The Apostle Paul identified this olive and the tav in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 with the first and last Adams. Okay, because it doesn't say first, it doesn't say the word first and last in Genesis 2, 7. But Apostle Paul says it is written. It is written where? It's in Genesis 2, 7. 
but it doesn't actually say the word in Hebrew first and last. It doesn't say that here. It says, inform Yahweh Elohim. Uh, and then there's an Aleph in the Tav, but it's not a translated word. Okay? The man from the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living spirit. It doesn't say that, you know, it doesn't say here where it says, um, when he breathed in, he became a living soul, is the Nepesh, all right? But what the Apostle Paul is doing is he's identifying something extraordinary. He's identifying that the, the first Adam, it, it, Adam is the olive, okay? And then the last Adam is the, see it says here, and the last was made a quickening spirit, all right? So that actually should say uh, the last Adam. He uses the word Adam twice. Let's write that in there. Okay, last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Okay, but what he's doing is he's getting, he's getting the, the phrases first, protos, and last, eschatos, from the olive in the top in Genesis 2, 7. Okay, and he's also getting this, the quickening spirit. He says quickening spirit, okay? And that's the breath of life, becoming the living soul in Genesis 2, 7. So what he's saying is Apostle Paul is saying that there's a first, there's a first Adam and a last Adam in Genesis 2, 7. Extraordinary. He's getting that from the Aleph and the Tav, guys. Wow. So this is a quote and something that's happening in 1 Corinthians 15 on the resurrection. Okay? Talking about the first Adam and the last Adam. So as we continue, now this is just a... Uh, summary, as, if, as we mentioned before, please read the whole thing, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Every man in his order or camp. Okay, and then it says, first fruits. First fruits. Christ. Then those that of Christ are at his coming. His coming is the parousia. So guys, the resurrection is the parousia. Okay, parousia in the Greek is his coming. And when he's coming in the clouds, that's what he's talking about. He's coming in the clouds. When he's coming in the clouds, there's a resurrection of the dead. Okay? And then verse 47, the resurrection of the dead. That's what the whole chapter is talking about. Okay? Those that were sown in corruption, they are raised in corruption. Okay? So that's what we described before. All those that died, died in corruption, and then they are raised. All right? Then... Verse 51, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Okay, so what it's saying is that we, at the time of the resurrection, not everybody's going to die, sleep, go back to the dust. Um, those that will be living will be uh, at a moment, at a twinkling of eye, at the last eschatos trumpet, which we know is to be the seventh trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. This is the resurrection. So the resurrection is the dead being raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Okay? And so that those that are alive, okay, as part of this, they will participate in the resurrection. Though they are still living, they will not die. Okay? So what do we have? We have the first fruits. We have the seal. We have the olive and the tav. Okay, that is the seal of his name. So the Apostle Paul identified the seal of his name by saying the first and last Adam. Okay, now let's continue on. And in Ezekiel 9, 2, this is what we told you before. One man was clothed in linen with the writer's or a scribe's inkhorn or a writing case or a scroll case. That's what we described to you earlier. So the man was clothed in linen. He had the writer's scribe ink case. Okay, the ESV calls it a writing case. We can also use that as a scroll case, okay? And then what do you do? We put a tav, okay? Just like we saw the olive and the tav in, in, um, in Genesis, okay? We have the olive, the first Adam, and the last Adam is the tav, okay? The writer with the ink cord, he puts a tav on the forehead of those that sigh, okay? Remember that? Okay, when we, the reason I, I said to keep note of the sigh is we saw the sign in Romans 8.23, all right? Um, or where was it? Yeah, it was, uh, 
uh, I have the first fruits of the Spirit and groan or sigh waiting for the adoption. Okay, so it's those that sigh, that groan, okay, that it's, it's uh, talking about here in Ezekiel chapter 9 too, just like Romans 8. A man was called like in it that he would put a tav on the forehead of the men that sigh and cry for the abominations of the people. Okay? Now, the principle of the seal in the book and the redemption continues in the book of Job. Job 31 and Job 19. Okay? Now, when, when the people are sealed, they're sealed with his name. Okay, and oh, that I would know, oh, that he, one would hear me in Mark, Ta. So this is the Ta that we just saw. This only appears here in Job 31, 35 and Ezekiel 9, verse 4. Okay, oh, that one would hear me, my Ta. Okay, the Almighty. So he's being marked with a Ta on his forehead. The Almighty, Shaddai. Okay, would answer and be written in a book. Written in a book. Okay, so we have a tab written in a book. That's like the, the scroll, okay, with the tab of the people written in the book. Okay, against my prosecutor. Okay, the prosecutor, the, the adversary is, is saying, no, no, you, you, you know, you can't. No, no, no. He's saying that, oh, that one would hear me, that my tab of the Almighty would answer, written in the book, my prosecutor. So what this is saying is that you answer by the seal of God. Then verse 36, and bind it like a crown upon me, and the, num and the number of my steps declare unto him, like a prince I would approach him. Now the binding on a crown is just like the high priest. Okay, he had a signet. In his crown, it was Yahweh Kodesh. The Lord is holy. Okay? And it was bound on his crown. So his crown had a plate on it. Okay? It's called a crown. And it's called a seal, a signet. Okay? So that's what Job is talking about. But it, we have the same expression written in the book, the top. Then we get to Job 19. We have a similar thing. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. Then they were graven with an iron pen. <laughs> and iron pen and lead in a rock, in a rock forever, chiseled in a rock. Okay. So again, we have the writing in a book. We have a pen. And then he says, I know my Redeemer lives. And then he begins to talk about the resurrection. I know my Redeemer lives. He shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. Wow. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh, he says, yet in my flesh shall I see God. How can you in your flesh see God? It has to be the resurrection. Though worms destroy this body. He's talking about his present body, but he believes in the resurrection. In the resurrection, in his flesh, he shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. My eyes shall behold, not another. Okay? Whom I shall see, he will see God in his flesh. The only way to do that is in the resurrection. But whom I will see myself, my eyes shall behold, and not another. How yearns my heart within me. So, guys, clearly we have these expressions of writing in the book, the seal of God, identified with the resurrection. Christ is the olive and the tav. Okay, that olive tav is also the seal. Okay, as we've shown you in other videos. So guys, definitely get the notes. Um, we're going to share more on uh, the topic of the seal of God. So thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't watched them, please watch the previous videos and guys, fear God, give glory to him, because all glory belongs to the Lamb for this information, for the mystery of the writing, the, the first and the last, the olive and the tav, the protos and the eschatos. Be all the honor and the glory forever and ever. 
And we give you glory. Amen.